If you find yourself in a situation when people book calls with you or people slide into your DMs and say, hey, how do I work with you? Congratulations, your messaging is working. You are halfway there. It is an amazing news. But why people don't buy? Why you can't close your sales calls? Today, we're going to talk about it. Listen, when it comes to closing people on the call or closing people in your sales process, there are typically three parts of this problem. First problem is elite qualifications. How do you quali qualify people? How do you handle consultative sales? Because consultative sales is a combination of art and science. And also, we're going to talk about the challenger sale model. This is the way how to conduct consultative sales. This is what I teach my clients. This is what I use in my business and it works really, really well. So let's start with your qualification for your leads. Listen, if you use just a Calendly link to book a call with you and you don't qualify your leads, chances are you allow people who are not quite either financially or otherwise, they're not quite qualified to work with you. This is why you are not closing your sales. When people say that they, they can afford it, when they're already working with somebody else or they need to talk to somebody else, you're getting those objections. Chances are you are getting not quite qualified leads on your sales goal. The first, the first, solution for this problem is actually putting in place a application form or a form where you can qualify people. You can, this episode is sponsored by my private mentorship program, Heart and Profit Mentorship Program. Listen, if you're looking for help with your offer positioning, meaning you want to sell offer that people actually want, actually need and ready to buy, you are working on your authority, meaning you want to get invited to stages, to conferences, to podcasts, because listen, not to brag, but all of my clients, all of them, yes, 100% of my clients get speaking engagements on podcasts, conferences, you name it. Also, if you're looking for help with your sales goals, um, I review your sales goals. And by the way, if you're not recording your sales goals, you should start recording your sales goals, just free coaching tip. So I help you with your sales goals, with your consultative sales to close more clients. Also, I heard that you are looking for accountability in a person who can help you with your mindset with um, just have a trusted advisor in your business. I'm here for it. To apply for my private mentorship program is super easy and simple. Check out the show notes if you're listening to it on a podcast or check out the description for this video if you're watching this as a YouTube video. Fill out the form. There will be a link to schedule a call with me. It's a quick link, quick uh, form. So fill out the form. I will review the form within 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. And also don't hesitate to send me a DM on LinkedIn and on Instagram, whatever platform you prefer and start a conversation with me. All right, back to the show. You can qualify people to, first of all, see the level of sophistication. Are they really ready to work with you? Are they really uh, your client because listen any money ain't good money you don't want to work with anybody you don't want to work with anybody you want to work with the people who uh, can achieve the results can't afford your services and want to work with you so the first step to solve this problem is actually put qualification process in place and I know it can be scary it, I know it can be like well what if people don't fill out the application? If people don't fill out your application, they're probably not going to be a good client for you, period. And if they can't invest like literally a few minutes out of their day to fill out your form, to answer your questions, to see if they're a good fit or not, then it's probably not your people. They Like you're not going to close them on the call 
Like, yes, you want to make it easy for them to book a call with you and your uh, application page, your, quali your questionnaire, your form that they're filling out, it should be reasonable. So it should be fairly easy to fill out, fairly quick to fill out, but you should collect essential information from your people to make sure that they can afford it. They are at the level of sophistication, at the level in their career, in their business, in their fitness, whatever you're selling, in their services, that they can actually achieve the results. And you also address the financial portion that they, they can indeed work with you. So like this is the first step. Get qualified people on the call. And I know it can be scary, but this is a mindset issue. This is not necessarily the skill issue. This is the mindset issue. Well, yes, you, you create extra barrier to book a call with you, but also it will serve you well because you will get people who want to work with you, who are ready to work with you, and more importantly, people who have money to work with you. Now, if you have that process in place, you're getting people on the call who can't afford, who, who have the money, but you're still getting those objections that you can't really close them. This is consultative sale problem. This is the skill issue. And listen, not at, like great salespeople, they're not born, they're made. It's a skill. And the good news if it is a skill, you can learn that skill. You can acquire that skill and master that skill. When it comes to consultative sale, what is important? First of all, your prospect on your sales goals, they should talk about 70, even like I would say 80% of the time, your prospect, your prospective client should talk and you listen. Listening skills are important. You should listen to what people are saying. Also, during your consultative call, you should address objections before they arise. And listen, people going to show their red flags before they appear. Basically, when you are leading them to the price drop, right? When you announce your price, hey, this is the investment to work with me. And normally after that, people, oh, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. I'm, I'm already working with somebody. I just got laid off. Uh, it's been a really slow uh, period in my business. Like they, 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 they will give you all of the objections that they have. But normally, if you conduct your consultative sale call right, People will tell you their objections. And when it's important, as you are talking to people, you should address, you should ask them those questions right then and there. Let me give you an example. Let's say there is a price objection. Let's say somebody fill out your form and they say like, yeah, I can afford it. Yeah, I like, what is, what is the price? Okay, $5,000, yeah, I can afford it. I probably need a payment plan. And this is something that you can put in your form. But when they start talking to you, maybe they weren't completely honest on their application form. Maybe they're like, yeah, sure. Like, I, 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 I'm gonna say that I, I can actually afford it because I, I, I need to talk to that person. But they will mention something like, they may say something like, oh, but it's, it's been really tough financially. Dive into it. What is like, what is that problem? What is that, what, what is that red flag? Address that. Maybe, listen, maybe you don't even need to make an offer. Maybe you need to stop right there and then like, look, I, 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 I I don't think it will be a right fit for you. Let me give you an example. I had a consultative uh, call with um, with one prospect, and we were talking. And the prospect said, "Hey, like I I've been out of work for many many months, and uh, the business was really slow. And I'm actually at the beginning stages of my business. I can't really even decide what I will sell. And does it make sense for me to?" make them an offer. And if you have 
appropriate offer for their level. So you can stop right there. You can you can ask additional questions. For, uh, for example, for me, I would ask, okay, when you are talking about your financial situation, uh, what would describe your situation better? Uh, you you covering your basic needs without no problem, but maybe you're just struggling with uh, generating extra discretionary funds in your business. Maybe you just want to have extra money or are you struggling covering your basic needs? And at that moment, that person is like, yeah, like I'm like, I, I, I can't pay my bills. So like, oh, okay. So um, right there, like, well, I do have VIP option and this is significantly less uh, investment um more affordable, more doable and necessary for them. So that would be a good option for you. So I'm not going to offer them flagship program, right? I'm not going to say, Hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, spend 45 minutes with that person for the price drop to hear like, listen, I, I, I really can't afford it. I will address right there. And then let's say somebody uh, is working with a coach. And this is something that you can ask on your consultative sale, uh, 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 consultative, consultative sales call and say, hey, are you working with somebody else? Like, are you working with, with a coach? And let's say that like, yeah, I'm working with a coach. And then you dive like, so they are on your sales call, meaning something is missing. Something is not working. Like they want more. And your job as a salesperson, because if you are in business, you are in sales. At, during that time, at that moment, ask, okay, like what, like, but what could be better? Like what, like what is, what is that? Like you, you are, you are, you are with me right now. We are having this conversation. So what is not working? Also, if you are getting this um, objection, not necessarily objection, but when people say, hey, I work with so many coaches, nothing worked with me. For me, it's a red flag. For me, I would ask them, okay, tell me about your experiences and tell me how this experience working with me, working in my program would be different. How, how, how's that going to work? Because maybe that person has a problem following the steps, following the directions, following the mentorship. And maybe it's a red flag and maybe it's not your client. Maybe you're going to be another story in their arsenal, in their experience. So like, hey, I work with this coach and it didn't work again, of course. So like address objections before they arise. And if you're listening attentively, if you're listening to what people are saying and if you're asking the right question because listen we're so like so many coaching programs and they will give you a script where you like normally ask why me why now um where do you want to be uh what is the what what is the issue like what is not working right now how how do you think we should move forward so those like five parts right and you're kind of moving through that script. But in real conversation, people will throw curveballs at you before you go through those five stages, right? And this is really important to um, separate yourself from the script and actually look at the person. You're not talking to a script. You are not here on a consultative call. You are not here to follow the script. You are here to ask the question and your question you you should absolutely deviate from that script if you see that conversation is flowing in a certain direction and you're asking those questions right there and then because maybe yes maybe they fill out the form and on paper they're qualified but maybe, maybe there are other concerns that you can address right there and then because if you conduct your consultative call correctly Ideally, you would not have that many objections because you would already handle them. Either you would handle them and you would decide, you know what, this is not the right decision. This is not the right solution for you. I'm not, I'm not the one. Bless and release, right? Or 
maybe you address those concerns, and when you drop the price, you just talk it about how it may be more doable for them. Also, on the consultative sales call, um, how do you conduct your conversation? How do you drop price is also important because we're so uh, in, in this like fear mindset, like, okay, like uh, the investment to work with me is $8,000, but I have, uh, I have payment plans. I have Klarna. I have 10,000 options uh, um, to work with me. Um, so which, which of the option is, uh, is good for you? And as they're thinking, like you start, to, you keep talking. Ideally, what you want to do, you want to drop the price calmly, drop, dr drop your painful price and get quiet, get silent. Let them think. Because when people like, first of all, people know that coaching or your services, your, consult, your cons consulting services, your coaching, your mentorship, they know it's an investment. If, they, if it is the right client, if they really pay attention, they, they know it is investment, right? Like, they're not here for free services. Let them think. Be quiet. That, that pause can feel really awkward, y'all. It can feel really awkward. But when there is a silence, people are thinking. Let them speak. Also... Don't battle non-objections. So, what is non-objection? When people say a statement, when people say, oh, it's too expensive, this is not an objection. This is a statement. We do not address the statement. If people just say a statement and it's not a question, again, pause. And when you pause, people might get uncomfortable. Yeah, it's too expensive, but maybe there is a payment plan that we can discuss. This is a question. This is an objection. N then answer that objection. Like, yeah, like, oh, and there are payment plans. I normally reward people who pay in full, decide, uh, and I want to reward people who are, are taking bold action. So... And the most, like, the most um, um, suitable option would be pay in full. But if it is rather hard to manage, like I also have payment plans, and these are these these are my payment plans. Like you can address right there and then. But what often happens, we get nervous and we get knee jerk reaction, and we start offering them payment plans before they ask for it. Maybe they can pay in full. They just need to think about it. They just need to like really process that number that you dropped. Okay? Like this is like this is essential. Like this is essential. This is essential. Now let's talk about the challenger sale model. And the challenger sale model is amazing uh, sales framework. So and the the essence of the challenger sale model. So first of all, and the core principle of the challenger sale model is when we challenge their assumptions and we really call them out with love, with empathy, with understanding, and we call out on their bullshit. Yeah, we call them out on their bullshit. And like, well, you said you, that you want a transformation, right? You, you, you just said that. So uh, first of all, uh, we uh, educate, we teach them for differentiation. We don't coach them on the sales call. We teach them for differentiation. And normally your teaching piece, right, it comes from your content, but you also on your sales call, you provide them, like, it's it's not about what you sell, it's about how you sell, right? You educate for the, and them for differentiation. And then, and you create uh, what it's called rational drowning. And rational drowning is basically when you uh, uncover the cost of inaction. Maybe you run projections for them. Maybe you show them how much money they're truly leaving on the table, not working with you. And you get that data, you collect that data uh, 
beforehand. So you work with enough clients, you know what results they're getting, you know what is going to happen if they're not going to invest, and you run those projections. And this is the rational drowning. And also, uh, you uh, uh, important portion of the challenger sale model is when you adapt the solution for them. Because sometimes people what people want people want specific solution for their specific problem. And even if you're selling a group coaching program, it's a curriculum based, I guarantee you that there is a component that is specifically suited for them. Or maybe you can offer them a customized solution specifically for them. Or maybe there is a component in your curriculum in your offer, in your consulting offer, in your mentorship offer that will fit them specifically. And uh, at the end of that sales call, if people feel like, oh shit, I need that. This is it. This is my solution for my problem. You did a good job. If people walk away from your sales call and they say, it was like a therapy session. I feel you. I, I, I feel heard and understood. You probably didn't do it a good job. And they didn't buy because maybe you started coaching them on your sales call. Listen, drop, <laughs> listen, let me know, like send me a DM or let me know in the comments if you're watching it on, the, on YouTube. Let me know if it is you. Let me know if it is you because when I started my business, I'm a clinical psychologist and like my organic reaction is to make people feel, feel good, understood and heard. And they're like, oh, Eugene, this is like greatest ther therapy session I ever had. So good. Uh, but I am not ready to invest right now. Because the, like, they think that the problem is already solved because they feel understood. They feel heard. They like they they they, they feel good. People like, yes, people might feel good after your sales call, but also if people don't feel challenged and if you if you don't call out on their BS, you're not really doing a good job on your sales calls. And listen, the best way to learn uh, consultative sales is not through watching modules, is not through reading books, is not through consuming more information, is actually doing role play. I, with my clients, I do role plays all the time. And also, I highly recommend for you to record your sales calls. Your sales calls should be recorded and you should watch your sales calls. It might hurt a little bit, okay? Because again, sales, sales, consultative sales is a skill. But you should review your sales call. And ideally, if you work with a mentor, your mentor should review your sales goals because not every mentor will offer that option. I, I agree with you. I offer that option. I will review your sales goals because this is important. Um, but it's important to review your sales goal. For example, I work with a consultant, amazing consultant, works uh, with uh, um, you know, Black-owned businesses, um, primarily women of color, um, beauty brands. And the problem was that uh, that consultant had really hard time closing people on the call. So we changed the offer positioning, but also I reviewed the sales call and said, like, hey, this is where you're losing your sales. And after we fixed that, boom, 24K in one single day. Some of, uh, some of the clients paid in full. Some of the clients signed up for a payment plan. But the sale, the, the sale was made. And again, like this is like this is something that you don't want to do it alone. You want to it's a muscle. It's like workout, right? Like this is not something that you want to do again and again and again. And also, uh, 
sometimes you will just get no. You will get more no's than yeses, and that's okay. And it's a part of business. Enjoy that part. Learn how to enjoy that part. Because, listen, I have ADHD, and people with ADHD, they have uh, rejection and sensitivity disorder sometimes, and rejection is hard for us. Rejection is hard, but, like, learn how to enjoy those rejections and learn how to enjoy the process. And also, if, like, if, if you need help with that, Fill out the uh, fill out the form. Fill out the application because um, I have limited uh, number of people I'm working with in one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, and the, like this is the piece that we're addressing head on. I review your sales goal. We role play and we role play those exact situations because like one of my clients, in fact, one of my best client clients, uh, had this. Um, Consultative, consultative sale call when a person could not pay or decided not to move forward. So we addressed that situation head on and we did role play and that that really helped. All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching and listening. Now, depending where you're watching me from, let me know what resonates with you uh, and I will see you in the next one.